Are you kidding me? What an idiot. I am so bloody sorry, guys. Um, oh my God. I have talked for eight minutes thinking you guys were talking to me. Oh, oh, oh my God. Holy smokes. Oh my God. I swear to God. I thought I had been chatting with you guys and I've been, uh, uh, oh my Lord Lifton. Oh my Lord Lifton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Crispy Galactic, for mentioning because I was like, what in the world is going Oh, Jesus H. Christ. But anyways, um, yeah, that was an amazing, interesting little uh, Lord have mercy. I'm so sorry, guys. That was interesting. And Harold Bosma. So am I, Harold Bosma. Uh, even though I thought I'd been on for eight minutes, I just clued, I just found out now that I haven't been on. Oh, my effing God. I swear to God, I thought I'd hit the um, thing. Anyways, I, uh, what I was saying at the very, very, very... Uh, I'm going to try to go as quickly as I can. It's great to see you, Harold, Harold Bosma. It's great to see everybody else as well. Uh, Telemachus, why I uh, put your comment on at the very beginning. Goodness gracious, this is going to be an interesting whatever. Oh, my God. And I went on and on and on about all kinds of things. But, uh, well, you can see what I want to start talking about. Yes, uh, Willie Marins, I hope to God I can get to your extremely late um, thing. <laughs> Anyways, it's great to see you all. Holy Lord, lift in. Anyways. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been answering your I've been commenting away, like talking to all your freaking comments, man. So just you guys can pretend whatever the hell you want to <laughs> think I was saying. So the first thing I do want to see, if you notice that the three stars there is I think a wonderful thing that happened earlier in the week was that Hissy Cat sent me a gift, an audio book uh, through Audible uh, of Martin Gilbert's World War One. Uh, and I don't have Audible. I'm not going to get Audible, but to. And I think this is a win-win-win for everyone. Um, is that uh, it, to honor his gift and a wish to God he was here? Is that? And I just got to say thank you guys for uh, for sticking around for eight minutes that you didn't decide to just say screw this crap. Uh, so it, thank you. Macho um, wouldn't have known anyways. I would have probably just kept on chatting. Good lord. Uh, anyway, so. Um, I decide I'm going uh, to buy the book through Google so that way I can still um, honor uh, Hissy, Hissy Cat's gift. But then I was like, wait a minute, I can give that as an option for the third round for the history heroes who are what am I? And if somebody doesn't want that as an op uh, as their gift uh, or prize or whatever the hell you want to call it, um, I'll come up with another affordable book or whatever, which meant therefore I had to come up with um, – uh, a deadline for the second round and the second round uh, looked up ahead trying to come up with like a date that was going to be like on a Saturday couldn't find one but my god there's some juicy stuff coming up in a few months that I was looking up in the chronology book I was having a, a connection fit oh my gosh great to see you Clark Commando 1983 uh, three great to see you uh, uh, he's driving north to see uh, the grandkids today okay thank you uh, for letting me know Charles Latour. Um anyways um so that's what I would like to do uh, with that thing. So what uh, for the deadline for uh, the end of it is going to be June 29th, which is very close to the Battle of the Somme. I thought that would be a, a kind of an OK thing. So here we go with the rounds. I'm going to show you what we're going to go on to. Oh, by the way, and Telemachus, why I popped your quote in the very beginning. Well, I loved it. And that was I think you did that on the Not Jay show earlier in the week there Wednesday night. Uh, and also, I just found it a good metaphor for a lot of the stuff that's coming up this year, especially with Romania not uh, cluing in that probably wasn't a good idea to enter the war. And uh, But you're going to pay the price. And then uh, also earlier in the week there, Charles Zatora, when you were mentioning, uh, saying that maybe Italy probably wasn't a good, uh, they weren't prepared to get into uh, uh, war at that time, and they did anyways. So, and uh, Mander Mike says, uh, great to see you, uh, uh, Clark Commando 1983, Charles Zatora says, You'll be up in Frisco area for some days. Okay. So anyways, there, we're just going to go down here. Um, this is one of the things I wanted to um, start doing. I wanted to do this much, much earlier in the, uh, in the live streams, which is kind of like an errata thing, almost having um, like a, like something on my community thing. The big yellow alert uh, earlier uh, was last week when we got into the end there when I was talking about um, the, lecture, the Spotify, um, not so quiet on the Western Front about air power. And I was like, oh, you know, 63 airplanes at the very beginning there in 1914 for the RFC flying across uh, the, their entire squadron or whatever across the channel. And then later on, it was 60,000 planes. It's like, 
it doesn't sound right. And I was like, okay. And I, you know, I scaled it down, but I was like, Chris, and then Meander Mike went off and took a look at some stuff and that and whatnot. And I was like, okay, you know what? We're good. We better start doing a better proper bit that way. So I was like, okay, let's start looking for a fact checker stuff as well. I was uh, talking with uh, Zoe Dufour earlier in the week and I was saying, boy, one thing I'm really enjoying, uh, I can't wait to get to at some point is, uh, doing this full time, uh, just waking up in the morning, focusing on live stream, focusing on uh, great war research, focusing on gaming the great war. That's it. Uh, and because I got to spend a bit more time this week doing some prep work and I was able to uh, connect some things together. Like I wanted this week to talk about, uh, go again to the Lone Warrior site and give them a bit of love and so on and so forth. And all these amazing little things connected, which I wouldn't have seen if I uh, wasn't able to have some prep work done, because I just would have ran right in. We would have just taken a quick look at the loans what, website and got the hell out. But you're going to see, you're like here, like all these nice little things that we get to connect the dots to just because I wanted to uh, get a bit more of the information about the, the, uh, the Royal Flying Corn and so on and so forth. We're going to go from boink to boink to boink and then to the con sim forum, which I also wanted to take a look at. And then find out that there was an interview for the designer with uh, for wings from the uh, for the Baron by uh, armchair dragoons uh, and so on and so forth. And you get the whole idea. Then uh, Jacobstadt, that uh, place we keep hearing about, um, that's up near around Riga and whatnot. I was like, I've had enough. I want to find out where exactly that is. Uh, and so I did. And then also about the China and the unrest there. Remember uh, last week it was uh, that a comment about. Um, um, Kwanzi province or something trying to declare independence. I'm like, I don't know anything about uh, all that area. So I wanted to go get a bit more on that. Um, also that William Aarons, and here we go with the, uh, the, oh my God. Well, we're just going to go with it, man. I'm so glad I did chop some stuff out of this show. Um, William Aarons um, uh, sent some pictures, which I'd love to share with you. I'd like to uh, give you an update on the Paul Header interview, especially due to the fact that last week, um, Rough Swordsman Wargamer did an interview with them. Uh, also, the book rec recommendations, which I did not get to last week, that I certainly want to get to. Um, I got this book, Harold Bosma. I know I was mentioning to, it to you earlier in the week there, the uh, the Bethman Hol uh, Holvig um, book that I was uh, saying that you, uh, I envy you and William Aaron, that you guys get to read it in the actual German. But uh, I got it. So I'm really, I'm really, really happy. Uh, and I would like to quickly talk a bit about that because he keeps going on about social democracy and social Democrats. And I don't know exactly what he means like by that. But obviously, it, it, you guys probably could fill me in quite a bit. And there's also this thing he mentions about the Panthers spring of 1911. And I guess they were butting heads with France around Morocco and so on and so forth. And I don't know anything about that as well. And I'd like to find out a bit more about that. My game wish list, it's quick, it's three. Uh, Baron, uh, Wings for the Baron, uh, Raiders of the Deep, uh, and um, uh, Great War at Sea Mediterranean. Well, there you go. Then we're going to get into the ATA. Uh, Harold Bosman, this is very cool. I will check it out. Oh, you lucky devil that you get to. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, like I said, we were talking about it earlier in the week. Earlier in the week and it is... Uh, that's one person I've just uh, constantly have wanted to find out more about. It just seems absolutely fascinating to me. Um, it's neat too, because well, for me, I've only read the introduction and just a little bit of the, of chapter one there uh, with their grief with France. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, you can see the guy's a proud German, you know what I mean? But he, he all, like, so he's also biased that way, but he's, he's lucid and so on and so on. Oh, it's just, ah, uh, I'm like, I'm just getting into it. It's not a very long book, so I'll, I'll get, but it's as probably as you can imagine, dense. If you guys can see that, that's something I did want to eventually talk about. I don't know if we're ever going to get to it, but it's that is that I do want to eventually try to do some kind of RPG in the World War One setting. Uh, and I was looking at the GURPS light thing quickly that I uh, showed you there, and I just thought it's a bit too much for what I want to do. The Ross's Rifles one there, the Canadian one that I've got upstairs from an independent uh, publisher. Um, uh dream dream something games uh anyways and that's it let's go quickly to so i'm gonna stop this uh stop the screen uh charles torsis looks like uh, two of the books in world war one should be here today yes that's what uh um i mentioned earlier to you i was hoping to goodness that uh they were actually going to pop up um uh manny mike says can you put that 
uh, title in the chat, please. Uh, for the uh, Reflections on the World War by uh, uh, Theo, Theo von Bethmann Holweg, yes, I can. And you can also get it free on the internet database if you wish. Uh, William Harris says, uh, those last dispatches that I sent have info about the German social traffic. Okay. I swear to God, I swear to God, William Aarons, I swear to God, I've said this before to you in earlier weeks. I don't know what is going on, but we seem to be like in this weirdo sink when it comes to this new stuff. I understand that we're, we're both doing the same current events, but from different whatevers. But you did in, a, in one of your translator notes there in the first uh, dispatches, your first ATA that you sent me over. Uh, and you mentioned, oh, I, I tried really hard to find out what the hell they're talking about, about this thing. And I swear to God, earlier in the week, um, it was one of the few times when, because uh, they always give me little footnotes in, in the chronology book. And it was something about uh, the secret Reichstag or something had been revealed. And I was like, what are you talking about? So I went and looked it up. And I think I found what you're looking for. And it was like I found it a couple of days earlier. And I'm like, oh, my God. I think this is what William Aarons is talking about. So this is so cool. Yes, I will. Um Good morning, Eric Goble. Great to see you, man. Great to see you. Um, I hope you're I hope you're having a good time. I hope you get uh, some extra. Actually, I hope. Well, obviously, everybody gets some extra gaming in that um, uh, ha, you know, has a long weekend. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Uh, I definitely will put it in, Meandering Mike. Don't worry. We're gonna. Uh, I will definitely do that. I'm gonna make sure that I'm just gonna see if it's in my links um, bit. Yeah, it's not a big book either. I pick. I picked it up for next to nothing. Uh, hold on here. Oh my God. We haven't even started. Okay. Let's start right off the bat though with the banner, uh, with, um, this can be interesting one, uh, to see if what you guys think about the history heroes, uh, who are, what am I today? World war one. So, and here's the, um, there's your first uh, clue. Napoleon knew how important I am. Who am I? And I'll put that in the, um, I'll put that in the, uh, comments. All right. And is it in there? Yes, it is. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Manning Mike says, Father Time. Well, you're going to get a point, as you know, as it works, but you are incorrect. Uh, Chris Pickham, uh, Charles the Torses Artillery Cannon. Interesting. Uh, you're incorrect. And Crispy Galactic says, Shirt buttons, and you are incorrect. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, I almost gave away a big chunk of the answer. That would have sucked. Uh, Telemachus says movement, interesting. Nope, but you're gonna get a point. Um, uh, William Ann says, what is logistics? Hmm, you, no, uh, but interesting. Uh, hold on here, uh, I gotta give you a point here. Panther Shadow says loyalty. Oh, I like that one, that's, oh, I like that. Uh, Harold Bosma says luck, okay, no. And I'm not going to know, and you know what I thought you wrote, because I got a bit of dirt on my man, monitor, and I went, Harold Bosma is saying that. Yenny makes is keeping the entry off your belly. Well done, man. Well done. Oh, you should get an extra point for that, but you're not going to. Uh, uh, Brian R. Smith says field medicine. Mm. No, you're incorrect. Uh, Nangue uh, Nangue <laughs> Good Lord, I'm reading my own bloody thing. Hold on here gonna pop this in here um there you go i can be found on every continent who am i flemica says dirt nice one but you're incorrect wow okay then uh let's see if i can charles satori says weeds uh nice one but no uh hold on here i gotta make sure that i'm still following my thing flemica says the infestation of people the scum of the earth no, uh, you're you're gonna get a point, but you're wrong. Um, okay, yeah, we're gonna go to the uh, Crispy Galactus is time management. No, you are incorrect. And then we're gonna uh, I'm gonna start getting things ready for the um, uh, for the the fact checking. Uh, Eric Gobel says aloe vera. Manny Mike says weather. That's neat. I like. The, oh gosh, you guys are really. Um, the guy, yeah, it's thinking at the things I wouldn't have. Uh, hold on here. Where's Eric Goble? I don't think you're on here. No, you are. Okay, there. And I got to give another one to me on your mic. Okay, let me pop in another. Telemachus says oxygen. Oof. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on here. And I'll give you another banner uh, thing or another clue. Uh, Central Powers, Entente, or Neutral. They all needed me. Who am I? Harold Bosmus says horses. Uh, no, you were wrong. Clark Mouse says, I'm going to be buying a couple more books. The Fort. Yes, it's a, a really good, a really goodie. Uh, the Fortress and, and uh, Semish Siege. Yeah, I know I misspelled it. Uh, not You weren't that uh, a PR. Yeah, you were, weren't that far off. Uh, Crispy Galactic says sleep. Uh, no, you're wrong. Uh, hold on here. Cheapers jumping. You guys are just killing me here with uh, uh, throwing out stuff. Um, Telemachus, you just got five points by doing that, man. Did I put it in the comments? I don't think I did. Um, hold on here. No. Central powers, entente, or neutral, they all needed me. Who am I? Wow, I'm really, um, oh, my gosh. Uh, a Clark Commando in 1983 says iron. Uh, no, but you get a point. And oh my gosh! Now we're getting up into the into the the interesting bits. I think. Let's see. And I'll give you another one. I became a casualty to what has been termed total war. Who am I? <gasps> William Aaron's does it. What is food? You done it. You did it, William Aaron's. Congratulations. Um. Yes, you did it. Well done. And Clark Commando, 1983, uh, guest Cole, another good one. Telemachus, Humanity, yes, another good one. And uh, so now we'll go into the food bits. Uh, hold on here. I'll, um, I'm going to present the screen so you guys can see the what I did. Well done. Man, you're right. It's just about to type an army. Aha. And that's why I popped in the uh, Napoleon uh, thing. There you are, man. You got it. Like, bango. Uh, there's, uh, I typed it in quicker than you, I guess, in a weird way. Hold on. Let me get the banners uh, uh, or hide it. And the, the next one I would have had was the blockade restricted much of me getting to Germany. And then the last one was as the war dragged on, uh, war uh, riots broke out on all sides because, because of me. Uh, and uh, Harold Bosma congratulates you, Willie Marins, and Crispy Galactic says, nice, and so does Clark Commando 1983. Yeah, and uh, the reason why I said uh, could be found on every uh, continent, because Shackleton right now is uh, stuck up down in, our, in our Antarctica, so that's why I popped it in there. Okay, so now we're going to go to the, my food bits, so now I can show you everything. I don't have to worry about, um, did I have, I thought I had a food one here. What the hell did I do with it then? I thought I had a, where the hell did I put it? Oh, don't tell me. I'm sure I have a food one. Oh, well, we're going to have to go to this for now because, or, 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 oh, it's in my history heroes. <sighs> Thank, no, it's not. There we go. Oh, my God. I thought I was going to go. Yeah, not too much food in Antarctica, Telemachus. Yeah, you're right. I, I should have thought, yeah, that's true. But anyways, okay. So all the numbers you're about to see that we're going down here is, uh, was from an episode uh, uh, from the Great Wars uh, special that I'd seen um, uh, a few months ago. I actually got to watch it uh, again with um, Zoe Dufour and her husband, uh, Stefan. And it was it's called the Great War Numbers. So all the numbers you're going to see here. So all I've done is cut and pasted. So don't give me any credit for any of this. But I wanted to also add the little bit here as well, uh, uh, a little bit extra. Yeah, eat the penguins, I guess, Telemachus. Uh, or each other, eh? Um, anyways, let's not get into that. I uh, also wanted to add how much, remember we were talking about the stacking limits and so on and so forth. I wanted to add this little bit for William Aaron's uh, when you were mentioning way back when, in the last week, uh, uh, Meandering Mike was getting into his math, uh, showing us some extra stuff here. Uh, William Aaron says, I was right in saying logistics since food service is a important supply yes it is i know but since logistics is uh more than just food that's why i didn't i didn't give it to you but i was like oh my god i like you get me you get me there all right canadian core so this is uh, a canadian core well, as you can see here uh these are just the notes i, I quickly put down here uh, so there was a canadian core that held just a six kilometer line in the lead up to the battle of Arras in uh, 1917 
and there was uh, 99,184 Canadian troops uh, stationed in that six kilometer line. And they had an additional British division there held in reserve. And there was, uh, and if you uh, include all the uh, support staff, there was 170,000 people. And um, uh, if I remember correctly, the video said that uh, um, it went back about 10 kilometers. It also had an extensive subway system, which just blew me away. I was like, I got to find out more and more about all these things. And the 50, and it also had 50,000 horses in just that little area. And they consumed 2.3 million liters of water a day. And uh, William, uh, 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 Indy Nidell mentioned that uh, the line for the Canadian Corps was only one half of one percent or 0.5% uh, of all the trench lines uh, for both sides along the Western Front. You can just imagine, extrapolate that. It's just mind-boggling. I'm just having a hard time still understanding. That's when we get into this total war bit. Uh, Miami Mike says, Napoleon was big on having the troops foraging on the roofs, spread out through the countryside, divide the survive, and unite the fight. Yes, um, uh, that was another uh, interesting little thing that I had uh, read about um, him doing. I guess that must have, it'd be interesting to know about, uh, he must have had a lot of trust in his generals, I'm assuming, for like command and control issues. Uh, that type of thing. Uh, so anyways, here we go uh, later on with uh, the German Corps. Uh, 33,444 uh, troops. I'm not sure if it was a corps. That's why I have the, uh, the question mark there. But in one month, um, they consumed a million pounds of meat, 600,000 loaves of bread, 242,000 pounds of canned meat, 121,000 pounds of marmalade, 73 pounds of coffee. And for the horses, it was seven, seven million pounds of oats and four million pounds of hay. And uh, uh, they extrapolated that out in one week for just the entire German army. It would have been 60 million pounds of bread, 131 million pounds of potatoes and 17 pounds of meat. I don't know about you guys, but I mean, that's just, I don't understand that type of stuff at all. And I, I mean, that's just the army. I mean, as you know, that's when we start to, uh, you know, they start keep uh, talking about total war and the starvation and so on and so forth. And I ma imagine as the war progressed, um, it, I, well, I've seen, I'm sure you guys uh, have seen as well. Yeah, Crispy Galactic says insane is right. We haven't even started talking about wood and all this other things about like just, it's just mind boggling. It was like, what is going on? Like they, they were saying, like, you've got to remember that every little whatever, like every headquarters and, and all that. And the, so, like that little area we were looking at, the little Canadian thing is that's a town. Like, and there's another town and then there's another town and, you know, and, and so on and so forth. I was just like, holy cow. Okay, let's get into the, I want to make sure I get into the fact checking bits. So hold on here. And we'll go to the first one here. And it's, uh, it's like I said, it's my notes. And then hopefully we'll zip off and take a look at some nice things uh, into it. And uh, away we go. Uh, Panther Shadow says, and soon the horses look tasty. Yes. Uh, well, um, in reality, uh, right now what's happening in, well, not, not right right now, I don't think, because uh, I think they still have a little bit of uh, food left. Uh, over in Kut there in Mesopotamia that they're surrounded, the British, um, primarily um, Indian troops are surrounded by um, the Ottoman forces there. And they're going to start eating their horses. And uh, I think a lot of the, uh, a lot of the Indian troops had uh, issues with uh, not wanting to eat, uh, eat that stuff. And some of them, you know, ended up, uh, I guess, getting to the point where, they starved pretty bad and so on and so forth. They're going to end up surrendering. But anyways, let's go to here. I wanted to get a few of the, um, like I said, fact check bits. Uh, so I went on Wikipedia, as you can see here, uh, looked up that the, the Royal Flying Corps on the 13th of August. Uh, Clark Commando 1983 says, got to be well. I'll need to pop some pills so I can eat. Okay, uh, great to see you, man. Um, I'll talk to you later. Hope you have a, a great remainder of your weekend, man. Um, if I don't you know, uh, talk to you live or whatever. Uh, 60 uh, machines flew from Dover across the channel to Boulogne, uh, Boulogne. And by 1918, the Royal Flying Corps had merged with the uh, Royal Navy uh, Air Force to become the Royal Air Force. And by 1919, had 4,000 aircraft. 
then I went, uh, I had this, uh, this was a um, lecture that I had on Monday night, a talk that I had, and it was by Ellen Wakefield, who's uh, from the Imperial War Museums. And later on, when we start taking a look at all these nice little links, um, uh, well, let's do it now. So I'll try to figure out how I can do this. So you don't have to look at this stuff and I can talk. Yeah, maybe that'll be nice. Hold on here. I'm going to stop the screen. I'm going to pop this in here. So, and then I'll try to see if I can talk and let you guys see what I'm looking at, or you guys can look at. Um, man, did I ever get a lot of sun in the past couple of days? I just noticed how red I am. Holy smokes. Oh, one of my friends, too, was saying, are you wearing sunscreen? I was like, yeah, not really. There we go. Okay, you guys can see that pretty darn good. So I'll try to get to my notes and while I'm talking. So hopefully, yeah, you guys can still see that. Goody. I'll try to get it so you guys can see something a bit better than that. Hold on there. That's the, uh, the first plane that... Um, uh, Alan Wakefield mentions uh, it's called the, the, the BE-2C by uh, the Royal Aircraft Company or something like that. Uh, and uh, he said it was basically the workhorse of, uh, of um, the Royal Flying Corps. Uh, eventually, at the very beginning of uh, the war, uh, they would use any plane they could get uh, um, for the military. But eventually they did start to standardize. Um, one of the big things that they uh, ended up having for reconnaissance, as you probably, uh, maybe many of you guys know, um, uh, even though the romance for us uh, or many of us for, uh, for uh, World War I air, airplanes is the air combats. But the primary role for World War I airplanes uh, was reconnaissance. And it just, you know, eventually, so good, there we go. So this was uh, what they called an L-type camera. As far as I know, it weighed about 200 pounds. Uh, may, hold on, maybe less than that. Hold on here. But it, don't let me get, uh, get get off into Wonderland. Uh, no, it was it was heavy. I don't know what that was. But eventually they do um, develop uh, one-way wireless communication with a 20-pound apparatus. And uh, they started to notice that, uh, I guess, the big impact for them with reconnaissance and whatnot and noticing that... Uh, the, with the L-type camera and so on and so forth, things were going to go really well was with the Battle of Neuve Chapelle. And Douglas Haig, uh, who ends up taking over for French, I do believe, uh, later on, in, uh, well, now he's in charge of the Western Front stuff, uh, was a huge fan of re air reconnaissance and so on and so forth. Do you guys know anything about uh, the clock code, by the way? Um, and it was a form of... Uh, um, it was a form of, for this wireless communications, here's one of the um, the planes that uh, they end, which is going to be uh, for the Fokker Scourge, uh, which is going to cause a lot of grief uh, in a bit. In a bit, And it's uh, it was the first plane to start using uh, interrupter gear. Uh, anyways, uh, with the uh, the clock code, I guess with the reconnaissance, what they were, uh, he was mentioning that is just like, it was, uh, you guys probably know a lot more than I do, like, you guys have, uh, like, like, for example, William Aarons, you've played a lot of the solo aerial games. You probably may have had something. So it's like, you know, like uh, um, from uh, 1 o'clock to 12 o'clock kind of thing. And then they have letters uh, to show you, like, going towards, like, a bullseye kind of thing. Gamers of Copley, Ashley, uh, just fine, uh, stopping to say hi. Great to see you. I hope you're having a good uh, – you get to have a good long weekend. Um, and, um, yeah, that's – I don't know what to tell him because it's uh, – is doing something there. So anyways, you can see that. Um, he, Anyways, what the, the basis of this lecture was is he wanted to go, uh, go over a bunch of the planes that he believed uh, that had an influence on the development of how the Royal Flying Corps uh, and eventually will become the Royal um, uh, uh, Ohio Ashley uh, I'm working. Oh, I, oh, darn it. Well, hopefully it's uh, you're getting paid a fortune. So uh, there we go. Uh, what else? I don't know who Brigadier Hugh Trenchard is, but he, I guess, was in charge of uh, the British uh, aerial defense, uh, aerial forces, or whatever, or uh, the RFC back then. But he was a huge uh, um, proponent of always trying to fight uh, the enemy over uh, the territory. So when the uh, Eindecker came in here with the interrupter gear and was able to start taking out a lot of the 
the British uh, reconnaissance uh, craft. And of course, if, as the guy was mentioning, oh, I'm sorry, uh, gamers of coffee, Ashley, um, you're not getting paid as a, a super duper fortune. Is that um, uh, like a lot of these reconnaissance aircraft, they have to be slow, uh, stable, so on and so forth. Not great for, um, you know, trying to get away from someone who can shoot at you with interrupter gear. Um, let me get to the, yeah, I'll just keep on popping. So this is one of the planes that he mentions that uh, the Airco DH-2 that came out, that was kind of like in response. It's a pusher plane. And it, so the, they have the propeller in the back, so that way you can still shoot out in the front. Um, it wasn't as good as, uh, let's say, the Eindecker, whatnot, but it was still able to, I think, I'm not sure, but I think Hawker, the guy who ends up getting uh, uh, one of the big aces for the Brits, I'm pretty sure uh, he ended up um, uh, popularizing the DH-2, or he, he, uh, I think he was the first ace uh, to... Uh, uh, to to use the DH2, I'm not uh, positive about that, but I know he um, uh, there was a there's a famous account of him uh, getting killed by um, uh, Richthof in in, in Richthofen's memoirs. He talks about it, realizing that uh, when he was fighting him uh, fighting him, he re was like, okay, I'm not going up against an amateur kind of thing, that type of stuff. Um, anyways, this was in response to uh, supposedly to help out uh, get rid of the Fokker scourge. Uh, that was one of the things here. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing here. I got to make sure I'm, there we go. And then this one is the first plane for the Brits that used interrupter gear. It was the SOP with one and a half strutter. He said that was pretty darn important. Uh, then the Harry Tate. And the Battle of Hamel was the first time the RFC parachuted ammunition to troops, and it was to Anzac troops. Uh, another interesting thing I thought was kind of neat was the, the Albatross D3, um, which I think is pretty darn famous for, uh, like, I think even Richthofen used it, and a lot of the JASTA, I think that's what it's called, that, uh, that squadron used a lot of the Albatro Albatross D3. This plane over here, I know it's not a great shot, but hold on here. But that was primarily uh, based on that lecture, uh, primarily built by uh, Austro-Hungarians, which I thought was, I was like, what? That's kind of neat to find out. Um, also that I thought was neat was the, there's a saying about the SOP with camel that the lecturer mentioned um, because it was such a difficult plane to fly. I don't know. Um, it had a rotary engine that spun, I guess, to the right. So it made the plane, if you turned right or something, go really quickly that way and hard to go left. So it was very difficult for people to um, to control. And there was a saying uh, that went with it, a wooden cross, the red cross, or the Victoria cross. That's what you get flying. Uh, that's one of the three uh, options you get when you fly the, uh, fly the whatever. Um, he also thought the Airco DH-4, this guy here, was the best single-seat fighter, uh, bomber, sorry, in World War I, this one here, uh, either either side. So I thought, but I wanted to show you some other neato things, like I said, about going to, hold on here, let's see if I can, Oh, oh, I wanted you guys, if you guys do want to see that, I did put it in the sources and links. I'm going to pop this in here. Is We're not going to show it to you. Uh, uh, Gamers of Coffee Ashley says, got to get back to work. Have a good weekend, everyone. Yes, um, and I hope you do as well. But I thought I'd pop this in for you guys if you guys want to take a look at it later. And this, I'm assuming, is part of Peter Jackson's little thing. But uh, you can actually go and take a look at a bunch of... Uh, airplanes taken off and it's the largest aircraft fly past since the 1920s which i thought was really neat to see but here's the i've got to get to my links so that way i can show you but oh my god we're 5th 11 45 this is terrible you know what screw this because i want to get to the proper stuff i'm sorry guys that we got so sidetracked well i wasted tw uh 10 minutes um let's go to the uh the week first right off the bat gosh this has been a weird one today Oh, well, I just got to go with it. 
There we go. And then we're going to get into your, uh, we're going to take a look at William Marins' pictures and go from there. Because I want to make sure that we get that type of stuff rather than going off into indulgence land. Um, so here, this is what happened this week. Uh, and hopefully when we get to William Marins' ATA, we can uh, take a look at it. Um, it'll start, um, there'll be some dots connected here. Um, Crispy Galactus says, love the aircraft picks. Yeah, and like I said, in the sources and links, you're in there. I will say uh, one biggie, which was awesome to do, and I've got it in the links there, is that uh, it's part of a military factory or something website, and you're able to compare aircraft, and it was awesome. So when I was watching uh, or listening to the lecture and whatnot, uh, he was like, okay, you know, that, like, for example, uh, Airco, you know, brought out the DH2 in response to the Eindecker and the Fokker Scourge. And I was like, well, well, let's go take a look. So I went off to the website and I was able to actually compare. But I have them here, but like, we just don't have enough time. So I was able to actually see, go, wow, I can see where, which one is a bit better, which one's not. Or he was saying, for example, like, uh, the B2 is a sitting duck for them. Can I see? And you can see the rate of climb. It's just horrific and so on and so forth. It was really nice. So it's in there. I just, yeah, you can just go on from here to tomorrow. So here we go. Uh, March 24th, the 4th. Uh, you know what sucks is I wasted so much bloody time this week, and it was one of the best bloody weeks for the war summary uh, from the globe due to the fact that it, I was almost like it was a different writer this week. Oh, yeah, of course, they still had a quite a bit of Anglo-centric uh, slant but it was amazing to even like some of the articles in it in the war summaries was like uh you know this is how the germans did it or you know this is how good they were and this I was just like what this is impressive anyways here we go uh, uh march 24th fourth german war loan stated to have reached 530 uh billion pounds and i think you also mentioned this as well william Marins, in your articles uh the gaelic press offices in dublin is rated Remember, we're about to get into the Easter uh, rising. Uh, Sussex torpedoed in the channel with 50 reported to have drowned. This is also mentioned in, which we're probably not going to get to it, but it's in the war summary, where uh, the Brits are starting to worry that there's an awful lot of submarines getting through the, uh, the nets. Uh, El Hassana is bombed. That I'm assuming is in uh, around in, uh, in North Africa, but don't quote me on that. March 25th, German artillery active southwest of the Meuse. HMS Cleopatra sinks a German destroyer. Uh, yep, uh, seaplanes bomb silt in the coast of uh, Schleswig-Holstein. Uh, the HMS Medusa destroyer sunk in the collision in the North Sea. Um, March 26th, the British delegation arrives in Paris. Uh, yeah, they, they keep talking about that. It's just this, um, well, it, later on here, um, the consolidation of, uh, of all the Entente powers. Um, Russian progress on Upper Choruk, um, Armenia. Uh, March 27th, two lines of German trenches are captured at St. Eloi, Ypres. A German air raid on Salonika. That was one thing. Wait until you see what happens in a few months. It is amazing how much control the, uh, the Entente powers take over of Salonika. And it was just like, it's, it's just amazing. Paris conference opens with eight states represented. Can you name them? That's me. I doubt if I could. That's why I popped them in there. Uh, uh, March 28th, a uh, second Anzac Corps is formed in Egypt. Uh, Russian torpedo boats sink 10 ships and destroy a munition depot on the Black Sea. On, and on a side note, I didn't even know there was a White Sea. I just found out this out this week. I was like, looked it up on my map. I was staring up in, in the living room. and went, oh my God, there's a White Sea. I didn't, I didn't know that all this time. Where the hell up? Makes sense. Germans attack uh, Harkur Malakor front, which is repulsed. Russian success north of uh, Boyan, Galicia, which uh, coincidentally, I think, is the name, uh, the first name of the designer for 14 days aerial combat, that free uh, uh, print and play game you can get. Uh, March 29th, Germans enter Malakor village. French recover uh, Avarkor redoubt. Fall on the Russian front suspends operations. We were talking about that when it was going to start turning into a swamp. Italian success is the Celts. Uh, Russian General Polyanov uh, resigns as war minister and is succeeded by General Shubiev and unrest in Holland. And my God, this just keeps seems to be happening. I think it was even last week there was another uh, 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 um, sacking or whatever, someone uh, resigning. Yeah, your Mike says, White Sea doesn't get too much action. Okay, 
Um, I like I didn't even well thanks yeah obviously for me it certainly doesn't. March thirtieth or, order in British Council on contraband. Reichstag secret ends. That's it, William Aarons. This is what I think is what you were talking about, and I, I think I may have found some bits of it. Uh, the Portugal, a French hospital ship uh, torpedoed in the Black Sea by German submarine with 115 reported lost. Germans repulsed at Fort Duomo and the Germans driven back over the river uh, Oldenbitz. Okay, so I'm going to stop this for now because I want to go to your pictures, uh, William Aaron. So let's do that. What a weird one uh, this has been today, but it seems to be almost like part and partial of, uh, of the show. So uh, where are your pictures? Ah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Eric Obel says, unrest in Holland must have rolled poorly. Unrest in, I'm gonna, oh, the problem is with me, Eric Obel, I'm not a, um, a, it'll take me about five minutes to figure out what the hell you mean. Um, present, share screen. So if somebody can help me out for the love of God, do so. Um, please let me know, I'm gonna have to make myself, hold on, I wanna make sure this is full on. And I think I have to, is that better? So this is, uh, uh, thank you. Um, uh, so this is um, William Aaron sending us a bunch of, uh, bunch of pictures and uh, from his uh, core HQ or his remote headquarters uh, or whatever um, uh, in Arkansas. And he's picked up three games, uh, the Great War in Europe, uh, the Deluxe One, Pass of Glory, and the Lamps are going out, and uh, the CDG Solo Systems for, which one would that be for? Pass of Glory and the Lamps are going out. Uh, Eric always says, last lines in your weekly updates. Oh, yes. There you go. Okay, and there's a better, uh, another shot. But yet again, I'm just using the uh, width ones, so maybe it's not, the, yeah, it's not too bad. This, oh, I just loved seeing all this, man. This was so cool. Look at that, the price of glory. I've got it right there. Cool, man. It's, I would be very interested to know what you think about it, uh, William Aarons. It's a really darn good book. Tim Cook's book. Oh, my God. Uh, William Aarons, Tim Cook, that guy there. He's, um, uh, I'm going to be uh, seeing him in a few weeks because he's going to be one of the uh, three historians at the Vimy uh, lecture that I'm going to be going to and they have a uh, meet and greet before the actual lecture. Oh my God, look at your notes. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, thank you. Oh, look at that. I'm, I, when I saw that and I saw the uh, the newspaper bit in there. Yeah. Yet again, man, William Aaron's man, like you're just blowing me away. This is just awesome stuff. And I think this is the last one. I think. Yep, it's number five. So I'll stop the screen for now, and then we'll go to your um, – so thanks a lot, Willie Marantz, man. And I hope you have a really good time. Uh, uh, Manny makes this. Alistair Horn wrote a French trilogy, 1871, 1916, and 1940. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about that, uh, uh, Manny Mike? Because I don't know um, – yeah, so do I, Kirsty Galactic. It's neat, eh, to see what – like how people um, uh, go about stuff. So let's go to Willie Marantz's translation. Uh, ATA first because I like that and it was it was pretty darn good and I hope to God we get to um, hope to God we get to uh, it may go black on me at the beginning oh it didn't excellent let's see if I can put me please let me know if it's too small because I, I want I'd rather you guys read than see me kind of thing and oh yeah I did read this one Okay, this one I didn't read, but I didn't read your second one, uh, William Aaron, so I don't know if we're going to get to it. Um, 65 enemy aircraft over Zeebrugge. And if you guys can let me know if that's how you're supposed to pronounce it, uh, I'd love to know. Uh, enemy air assault on Zeebrugge, uh, London, 20th of March. The Admiralty has made known uh, this morning 50 British, French, and Belgian bomber aircraft accompanied by 15 fighter planes attacked the German armed aircraft station and its airport at um, it caused considerable visible damage to have been done. Sorry, I got to grab some water. Each of these bomber aircraft carried on the average 200 pounds of bombs with them. Manny Mike says the fall of Paris, 1880. Oh, okay. I get you now. Um, boy, I'm uh, going to say this, Manny Mike. I, I haven't uh, nowhere near read the full book, uh, The Price of Glory. 
but uh, I love the way that guy writes. So that would be, I would, and if that's the case, to be honest with you, I wouldn't mind um, picking up the fall of Paris, 1878, 71, because that certainly would probably give us a lot of, or at least me, um, a bit more uh, background of uh, this big hate on between uh, the French and the Brits. Oh my God, I forgot uh, to pop in the book. Uh, Man, you Mike, we will. Um, before I leave, uh, all, all planes were able to return to base safe, safe and sound, except that a Belgian officer is seriously wounded. Uh, 21st of March, the war proposal in the Reichstag. There is a proposal under consideration in the Reichstag against England. This is where, uh, is it this yet? No, you, I think we're going to get to it. Uh, yeah, because I, I popped you in yellow. In what has been learned uh, concerning the suspension of all regular trade, we feel like a like mind with a number of leading political publications. Uh, this could be it, though. It still blows me away, though. I didn't, uh, it's from this book here, uh, reading this, I, uh, to find out that unrestricted submarine warfare is still not, is still uh, the, the full on, full on resumption is not going to come until uh, I think 1917, like early 1917. So we've got a long way to go until it gets back into that. But there's still obviously going to be a lot of ramping up. There's still, as we know, there's people, uh, uh, ships getting sunk left, right, and flipping center. Uh, the great Admiral von Tirpitz praised not only the acts and creativity of our people, but in the words of our Kaiser, bitter necessity made, made us a strong fleet that has brought us to the spectacular implementation, similarly along with German statesmen as well, to decide what is the earliest and strongest way to make ourselves available with power and reckless persistence against the English uh, who are wanting to destroy their peaceful competition. The overwhelming majority of our people know this as well as does the creator and our organizer of our Navy. The article continues on, including hope for great success. Um, we've got five minutes left. I want to get to... Ah, this is it. That's okay, goody. It ended with the following statement. In this public pronounce pronouncement we hold that in these serious days to do our duty on behalf of our people and fatherland whose fulfillment of our national spiritual goals we are commanded to support and you said uh translator note i looked in vain for anything that seemed to be an actual proposal that had been voted in uh, uh, voted on in the reichstag and like i said um william Ernst, when i saw you write that and i was uh reading it i went oh my god uh and then i ran back to the chronology book. Like I said, on March 30th, which is today, freaking awesome. Reichstag secret debate ends. Resolution in favor of free use of submarines adopted by all parties, except the socialists. And yet again, that other another dot connecting. Uh, is that the socialists? Are these the social democrats uh, that uh, Bethman Holbeck keeps yabbering on about, about social democracy and whatnot. And, oh, it's just amazing stuff. Uh, represented by Herr Lederber as being an effective weapon against the British conduct of war. Um, so that's what I think. Does that make sense? I think that's, I think we found it, William Ernst. I think we've connected the dots there. We've got three minutes left. I want to make sure that uh, I put the um, book in. I uh, also, okay, is there any quickie bits? Yes. I want to show you the Jakobstad thing. Uh, very quickly, we're going to stop that screen. I'm going to present this one, share the screen. Just because it's that uh, place we keep, uh, like I said, we keep uh, uh, seeing up near Riga, modern day Latvia. It's uh, near, I'm going to show you a quickie map because uh, I was like, enough of this. Um, hold on here. Uh, I got to pop it up here first. Hold on here. I almost feel like we need to do like an after hours show or something. It's just so wild. Uh, there's the Jacob step map. It's not a great one, but I wanted you guys to at least um, see kind of where it is here. I'll get rid of me. There we go. So that's where it is uh, in uh, in the real world now. Uh, that's where uh, we keep hearing about Jacob stat right now where the Brit uh, Brits. Uh, the Russians and the Germans just keep knocking heads here uh, before, I guess, the thaw uh, kicked in. And then we're going to go to stop here. Now, remember the uh, Crispy Galactic says do it in for a minute for after hours. Yes. Um, is that uh, not going after dark? 
Yes, but it'll be uh, period appropriate uh, saxophone music, uh, meandering Mike. So maybe with uh, some kind of like that weird, uh, you know, that uh, staccato voice that you always hear uh, that they do there. Um, yeah, let's go. So uh, like I said, the all the book recommendations, except the ones um, I'm going to pop it on here. Let's go to it quickly uh, for meandering Mike because it's a dandy is uh i did it again as per flipping usual hold on here i keep getting at least i didn't get rid of you guys um which would have sucked hold on here i want to make sure i can go to it relatively quickly since i just purchased it uh william Mary says when you read my other email you will see the split in the social democratic party of thank you oh my god uh yeah this sucks that uh we didn't get uh, i wasted so much time uh hold on here I'm going to put it in here and then we're going to go to here. I just want to make sure that and, uh, well, I don't see it there, but uh, hold on here. I'm just going to actually, I'm going to put it in here. So there it is in the comments, me and your mic. I just popped it in the full on uh, for you. And that's what it, uh, oh, you haven't seen it yet. I don't think you can see anything bad. No, you're not going to see anything bad from my screen. I was like, but you will see a book that I'm thinking about getting. And that's this one here, Haig's Enemy, uh, uh, Crown's Prin uh, Prince uh, Ruprecht or something of, um, of Bavaria or something. All right. Uh, yeah, right at noon. So... What a, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I apologize. There were so many things I did want to chit chat about. I didn't even uh, we didn't go to the Lone Warrior site to show the fantastic um, book review on World War One uh, aerial armament. And uh, this person made these amazing little cart. But I do have them in the links. I think I put it in there. So please, for the love of God, go down in there. And there was also the Consim Forum interview with Wings for the Baron. Uh, that armchair dragoons uh, did, which I was, it was amazing. I never did get to talk about the Paul Hedder interview very quickly. I'm just going to say that I was thinking about, since it's so quick on the heels of what they just did, I was either going to not do the interview, there's no real need to it, or wait a while uh, to do whatever. There's something quicky, quick, quick I can mention. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, Yeah, and eventually I would like to uh, uh, do an RPG. That's it. I hope you guys have a great uh, weekend. Um, for me, anyways, I'm so happy now that uh, there's. Uh, oh, I okay. I'm gonna. This will be a little bit indulgent, and it's actually about Meandering Mike, William Aaron's, and Charles Satora because all three of you guys are in my game. Uh, remember, uh, Paul Meandering Mike says Paul's looking forward to being on your show, Chris. Really? Oh my God! I didn't know that. Here I was talking to Harold Boss earlier in the week saying, well, I don't need to do the interview now because um, someone else has already done it. I can go focus on other stuff. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's a good, it's a good thing. Charles or Charles, stop. You don't go yet. Uh, is that uh, I actually did roll uh, for all three of you. So Charles Satora is Italy, uh, William Aarons is Greece, and uh, Manny Mike is Albania. Uh, Harold Bosma saying, uh, thanks, happy Easter, and see you next week. I hope to God, too. I had to roll all three for you guys because something secret happened in my game, but I can't tell you. Uh, all three of you has failed. Uh, your spies or diplomats did not find out, but it's very Telemachus-like. It's very secret treaty-ish. That's all I got to say. Um, uh, that's, yeah. Oh, uh, great. Uh, okay. Uh, that's great to know me, Andrew Mike. I'm even more motivated now if he wants to come on our thing. Because I was like, well, what's the point? I didn't want to be like a whatever. I was like, well, and maybe it's going to be like, or people are going to be like, I don't want to watch another bloody interview or whatever. But, uh, well, that's great to know. William Manson says, I will check out about the Bethlehem book. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you lucky little devil because you get to read it in real German. Okay. Uh, great to see you guys. I'll talk to you later. I've, I'm off to go and game my little brains out. I can tell you that much. Okay. See you later. Bye.